One set of tools we're introducing with InDesign CS6 is what we call adaptive design tools. And this is really a set of tools that allow us to create liquid layouts, alternate layouts, and also linked content. With these three things, we are really able to create layouts that will adapt to any size. This is specifically important for workflows, for example, when we design content for, uh, for tablet devices, for the iPad or Android devices, for example, where the screen orientation may change, where the screen resolution may change, or even in workflows where we design for uh, print ads, for example. Uh, imagine a print ad that needs to be the same content at various sizes for uh, various different magazines. So let's have a quick look at uh, what these three things actually mean and how they work in InDesign CS6. The first thing we're going to be looking at is liquid layout. To show you what I mean, I will go here to my page tool and we can see in InDesign CS6 we have these little handles here that allow me to modify intuitively the size of the page. And we can see that in this specific case, actually nothing um, liquidly adapts to the page. So let's make that work. Let's move over here to the digital publishing workspace where we see that we have a new liquid layout panel. There's uh, various ways that we can apply liquid layout rules to objects on a page. Let's use the panel for this time. Simply by selecting objects, I can pin those objects to specific areas of the page. So for example, I can choose here a liquid page rule and say that this one is here is object based and I will pin it to the top right of the page. And we can see that the object is now pinned there. And again, with my page tool selected, I can now move that page and see how that object actually moves around as the page resizes. Pretty cool. Another thing that I want to do is select this background image here and again make the uh, liquid page rule object based. But I'm going, also going to ask InDesign to auto fit the image so that when the page actually becomes smaller or bigger, that image auto fits inside of that image frame. One last thing we need to pin down is this uh, object here and we're going to pin it to the bottom left of the page. So that when the page changes, let me just grab it down here and, uh, and show you how that object is now pinned to the bottom left of the page. And we're now ready to use these liquid page rules to actually create something that we call alternate layouts. If we go here to the page panel, we see that we have one series of layouts. So for example, here we have the cover of my uh, document. If I go here to page two, we see that we have the beginning of an article and so on as we go through the document. Of course, this is a vertical layout. Let me create an alternate layout for this magazine. Let's go here to the pages panel and create an alternate layout. I can give it a name. I'm going to call it iPad Horizontal. The source of all of the elements that I'm going to use are, of course, from the iPad Vertical. I want all of the elements that I have in that layout also in the horizontal layout. And I can choose the page size. I can link the stories, which I'm going to be talking about just in a second. I can copy the text styles to a new style group, which is very, um, very useful to, to be able to create different text styles, paragraph styles, and also character styles for, um, for other formats of the same document. And I can also activate smart text reflow. Let's say OK to that. And InDesign has now created an other layout with exactly the same content that we had here in the vertical layout. Let's go check it out. Let's me go here to iPad horizontal and we see that the image automatically scaled inside of that image frame. The objects have moved accordingly, exactly like we specified in the liquid layout rules. And I can now continue working with that. So let's look at this article here, for example. I see that here I have a title with a couple of columns. Let's move over here. I have the same title here. Uh, all I need to do is just move it slightly, okay, and reposition it on the page so that it looks fine. But there is one thing that is also very interesting in this whole adaptive design tools concept is that 
the elements that I duplicate are now linked. Okay, so for example, we can see here that this title is linked. And what is it linked to? It is linked to the original text that is over here. And we can also see that here in the links panel. Let me just go back to the page two of the horizontal version, select it, and go to my links panel, and we see that we are in effect linking to a text file. The benefit of that is that inside of a single document now, I have the ability to um, to have linked content, and that can be text, that can be images, that can be graphics that I import into my InDesign document. So let's go here to my page two, and for example, if I change the text here now and write something instead of nothing, and go back to my alternate layout, we see that InDesign alerts me that there has actually been a change to that text. And if I control click on it, you see, I can update the text automatically. So basically, with this set of tools that we call the adaptive design tools, which includes the liquid layouts, um, the alternate layouts, and the ability to link content within a single InDesign uh, document, it makes it much, much easier for you to design content that will need to be rescaled. And rescaling means uh, being rescaled for uh, tablet devices, different screen resolutions, or even in the print workflow for when you create documents that need to be uh, published to different sizes, to different sized magazines, for example. All right? So these are our adaptive design tools in InDesign CS6.